Hey everybody, welcome to this live stream session. I've got my great friend Peter Freeman with me. Um, I just want to thank Peter so much for coming on at short notice, as you may have read in the email that I sent. Uh, and obviously we were going to have John Craig on, but um, unfortunately due to very difficult circumstances, we couldn't. Um, John talked to me earlier today, and so I, I really appreciate him, him trying. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you, Peter, for coming on and really excited to uh, analyze player submitted serve videos. Uh, this is always a fan favorite and Peter is so good at it. Uh, people have what, what would you say, Peter? People have submitted like, I mean, for certainly like hundreds of videos. You think you've gotten to the thousands yet for like analysis? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's this one guy, Gordon, who just even <laughs> we've literally had thousands of conversations just through my challenges Gordon. so i love to do there, there he is, is. <laughs> mention you gordon so i love i love to do challenges where people send their videos it's a great way to build the relationship before we get i'm really looking forward to helping you guys before we do though i really just want to send my condolences to john craig we were just down um with tennis con live with him he's a great person just lost his mom it really hits home to me. My mom is 87. She's kind of hanging on by a thread, it seems like. And uh, mm -hmm. I know how much that must hurt. So I just want to say, John, you know, we love you, buddy. And um, I I'm wishing you and your family the best. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Same here. John's a great guy. And just, yeah. Um, just be well and, and looking forward to chatting again soon and take care. So, yes. Yeah, so very excited to talk about the, or uh, analyze the serve. So let me get them up. So, yeah. Um, I guess while I'm getting them up, oh, we can't start with, with high maze. This is ridiculous. Um, so what would you say maybe are just a couple of the keys to a powerful serve? Um, and first of all, oh, sorry, before I even let you speak, you definitely need to check out peter's um secret serve power source video that went up yesterday uh it's a great one i personally implemented what he's shown in that video to great effect uh, i was telling peter and ryan just combining what he's talking about with the birthday hat um technique and it's like a big explosion honestly like it's insane so peter yeah while i'm getting the videos up what are a couple of the the, the, the secrets or um fundamentals to getting more power on your serve well Number one, if you want to get the most power and control on your serve, you've got to do it the right way. You know, you've got to have the continental grip. You have to have the secret power source, which I point out. Uh, it's very tough when your wrist starts to become kind of flat or back like that, because then you can see my palm is basically there's strings. If they're coming up at it like that, the ball's going to fly out. Then you're kind of like compensating the hit where when you go about the right way, just your racket path just naturally wants to put that ball in, you know, hard and, and put it in. And then finally it's the timing of when you're, when you get here, if you watch my videos on the secret power source, it's the timing of going from here and then the legs driving up at the same time. So you hold this, see lots of people, they, they naturally move their arms with the toss. So, and their leg drive. Like it's all connected. So people tend to come back here right away and they drop behind their head. And so you're back here too early and then your legs drive up and you hit it. But if you watch the pros, they throw the ball up, the ball's up, but they're still working their racket up here. You see, they don't throw the ball up and then automatically flip back there. And I think that's a major challenge for a lot of people on the serve. Yeah, yeah, these are really great thoughts. Um, thanks, Peter. So let me get the serve up now. I was actually I had to download them for some reason. I couldn't find them on my computer. But uh, here it is. Well, yeah, here we go. Okay. So let's let's just play it once. And then we and this is Ralph, by the way. So let me play this video and then I'll do it slow mo. Ralph looks like a baller. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a pretty good serve. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, Ralph is obviously a, a pretty good player. Um, did, did he put in what his rating was? No, that's I should have asked for that, actually. I did not ask. Um, Ralph, okay. if you're here, let us know. Well, I would say solid 4 to 4 5 serve. Um, and then another thing I want to say before I go into advice, 
Sure. Not every, what I like to tell people is everybody is the captain of their own ship or their own tennis CEO. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, every tip that you're given, you have to take and, and like your, cause Ralph, your serve's already good. You know, I'd imagine this is, this is an above average serve for recreational tennis. Yeah. So definitely. he should feel very confident about what his serve number one. Uh, Cause I feel like sometimes as tennis players, we, we just are too insecure even when we should be very, uh, you know, secure in what we're doing. And, and Ralph has a good looking motion. Um, and then as, so if you can just stop it right there, right here the, or earlier, yeah, right there. So as far as if there's things that he can get some extra juice on his serve. And again, only if it starts to feel, but you got to give it a college try. I'm not saying after 10 serves, you know, the field's, awkward you give up i'm not saying after one week but if you take my advice and you know you're really going with it for you give it a good 20 30 days you're like well yeah it just doesn't feel as good as my old serve you know then maybe go back to your old serve but if we're just talking in general what a serve as, as jeff calls him jeff saltancy which i love him because my, my serve surgeon or a serve specialist you know like i, I consider myself a serve specialist and like Okay, what are we going to do to absolutely max out on your serve? If you see his standing position, and let me know if you can see me or not see me, Aragon. You know, his legs yeah. are very kind of close together. Can you guys see that? Uh, yeah. I can't see. Uh, I can see your, like, the top part of your yeah. legs, I yeah. guess. So it's, uh, it's very close. So when he goes, this is really the thing I want to point out. When Ralph goes, we don't really see his chest ever. You see that? Mm. And so he's not getting as much rotation back and then into the core as he could. See, now, if he just takes this leg and brings it that way a little bit and he just changes his stance and widens it out a little bit, then without even trying too hard, when he goes into his first move, you see how mm. you already see my chest? Yeah. So, I mean, I would, I would just work on that. And I think he could also – widen his stance just a tad. I think his legs are just a little too close together. So imagine your legs are too close together and someone goes to push you, you're going to yeah. fall over one way or the other easy. If you, if you get a little wider and now you have more momentum, because remember, we're trying to use the kinetic chain a lot, that ground power. And since his throwing mechanics are pretty good, if his ground force gets better, then he could get a little bit of a bigger serve and – Maybe a little more spin action if he adds more rotation what he's doing. He can he can uh, so he can just add little things like that. And but if we take a look at the serve, I mean he's already I think that first serve goes in and like you know, pretty high up the fence, almost hits the crossbar there. So we're talking about little changes for somebody like a Ralph here. He's he's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, a good serve. It bounced high, like you said. So, in terms of um, the like narrowness of the stance, like I guess so. As you said, you know, the wider it is, the more it encourages you to to turn your body. Because I guess you see like some servers who have a narrow stance. Like I guess Roddick has pretty narrow, and then you see some servers who yeah, well, a lot of servers who do the pinpoint. But I guess they're able to turn their body. So it's, so it's more encouraging if you have a wider stance. Well, Roddick number one. Yeah. Like I think his feet could be a little wider apart, but also the state, like if you watch Roddick, yeah, his feet are together. That's true, but he's angled more like this. You see? So like, if you watch, see, so even though Roddick's wow. feet are close together, his stance, if the court is over there, is still like this. When he goes into his first move, you still mm -hmm. see his chest very easily. You watch his videos. You know, so it's not like Roddick has his feet close together and it's like this. See? Mm -hmm. You don't see this on Roddick's serve. You see this on Roddick's serve. That's, that's, that's the most important thing I would change if I were working on him with him. But I wouldn't be obsessed with it either. If, if Ralph tries it like, man, I absolutely hate it, I'd be like, you know what, Ralph, let's look at other parts of your game because, you know, the serve isn't something you should – I mean, you always want to get better at everything, but I would think that this would be one of the stronger parts of his game. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. Uh, is there anything else that you 
Was that like the main thing? Is there anything else you wanted to look at? Yeah, or I mean, you know, look, Ralph doesn't know me. And yes, yeah. it's, it's that's the most glaring thing to me. And I don't want yeah. Ralph going down a rabbit hole trying to change yeah. a bunch of things when one I'm thing. just taking a look at one serve and, and I'm seeing a pretty good serve. You know, look at how he uses a non-dominant hand. I mean, he does lots of things pretty nice there. So let's take a look at somebody else yeah. uh, who might need a little more help. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, let me get this next one on here. Appreciate it. And we will get to your questions <clears throat> a bit later. Uh, we just want to make sure we have enough time to analyze the serves because um, Peter does have a time constraint here. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Who did I just download? This is, sorry, this is Tom's, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tom. All right, here we go. Tom so let's. Nordstrom? No, I, no, I don't think it's Tom Nordstrom. Okay. Different Tom. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm forgetting, but I'll check it down. Oh, I think that might be Tom Nordstrom. I think that is Tom Nordstrom. Oh. That's Tom Nordstrom. Oh, it is Tom Nordstrom. Sorry. <laughs> well, first of all, Tom Nordstrom. I, I got to say, first of all, I love Tom. He's a great, hardworking student. And, um, you know, we're good friends. And, and, and I do want to, I hope that this is an old bit. Yeah, there you go. Because I've told Tom, because what Tom has is a weak power L position. So let's go back to the deuce court, if we could. Okay, sure. Oh, and we went there. <laughs> I have told Tom. If you could maybe stop it, like as he's in his wind up, you know, as he gets to like the the trophy or the secret power source. So a little more, a little more, like right there, stop. Okay. So. Oh, sorry, Dan. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just the hair back, you know, we're, we're anywhere around there. You see, guys. So I told Tom a number of times, you know, especially because he really likes to get his serve analyzed. He likes to get his strokes analyzed. I would practice my serve in the ad court for a long time if he really wants to get rid of it. He knows what his number one bad habit is. And if he really wants to get rid of it, he should not even be practicing serves in the deuce court. And I would also have him practice in the service box and wouldn't practice at the baseline. You know, again, he's one of the hardest working students, but just like everybody, they're like, okay, I want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then, you know, I need him to be like super dedicated. If he really wants to get this and be like 30, to 60 days straight of mm. service box, ad court. Why do I say that? Because especially if he's in the deuce court, you see it's, it, it's, it's hard to get into that rotational spot and then you know, bring it across to the deuce court. That's a lot, that's a lot of work if you're, if you're not naturally good at what I would call the power L position. So what is the power L position? I'll show you as a, so maybe if you could bring me up now on the screen. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So what Tom is doing, we can see he's out, he's way out here with his elbow. So like in the, in the um, seat where it should be in the secret power source, he starts to get here very early. The elbow is out here. Mm -hmm. I would call this a weak L. There's a couple of different spots that people get into that I call weak L position where a strong L position would be to take this and push it this way. Like you're a quarterback in the NFL getting ready to throw. See, imagine a quarterback going, okay, now I've got to throw this 30 yards down the field. So how are you going to have a big serve if, and how are you yeah. going to throw the ball 30 yards down the field if you're like this? I think once I make that analogy of like a, a quarterback having to throw a long bomb like this, everybody can kind of quickly see like, oh, there's just no way that would happen. Where if the quarterback gets like this, now all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, it looks like he could chuck that thing pretty far. So you see that? So as a as a lefty, for me, this is not too hard to be here in this position and serve out to the deuce court. See that? Because look, my body's not having to struggle to get the ball to go over there. Now, if I was trying to get this position, then have to serve to the ad court, you know, now all of a sudden I could start, I, my elbow's gonna wanna come out here so I can naturally hit the ball. See that? So if you're not used to this, what's gonna happen to get the ball over there, the easiest way to do it if you haven't already trained your body is to kind of cheat and come out here and then hit the ball over there. You see that? So that's why I don't want him serving to the deuce court because he's a righty, you know? So uh, I want him serving to the ad court so he can just be standing here like this in, in that quarterback position 
and he doesn't have to struggle to throw the ball, you know, to that side of the court. So that would be the drill I would give to him, which I've already given to him tons of times, and I keep telling him. But he, he does love to keep sending me the video back at the baseline on the wrong side, and he did it to you, Maribon. So even though I love him, I'm giving him like a C- minus for sending that, that video to you, okay? Mm. I'm, a tough, I'm a tough teacher, right? So I want him here and up, right? And then back and hit. I mean, I basically want him to watch my lesson that I submitted to you and practice that in the service box on the ad side over and over again until he's got it and not send yeah. another online instructor a video from the baseline, from the do side. There we go. There we go. Preach, my friend. Preach. I'm preaching. <laughs> preach, I'm preaching. bro. Okay. If you want the truth, I'm going to tell it. Yeah. All right. I'm done on that. All right. Sweet. Um, Okay, sorry, I'm downloading another video. I'm not sure why I had to do that, but um, let's see. You know what? Maybe I'll just open it in. Oh, here we go. Okay, awesome. So this one is going to be Roger, and Roger's okay. will be you got it. You got You got to take me out of the screen. Okay. Let's take you out. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. And I have a bunch of other clips if you want me to, you know, of, open. Of Roger? Yeah. Do you have any you from sent the like, back? Like 12. Um, if let you have me any see. of Roger from the back, that would be great. Guys, that's another thing, too. If you're working with online instructors, probably the best view is from the back and, and, okay. clo and closer. A lot of people tend to send their videos like this where it's far away from the side. I can help them but I'd see it a lot better what's going on. And there's a back view. If there's not a back view. I can, I can, I can work with this. Okay. What would, what um, there, there actually is a, there is a back view. Sorry. I don't know why, like I have to download it again. Um, actually, yeah, let me just share. I can just share this window. It's fine. Um, okay. so let me get that up real quick. Here. And then let me, Share the screen and let me get to it. Here we go. All right. As Maribon's doing this, can you just give Maribon a hand for all this work he's doing this week? He's live every two hours. He's <laughs> taking videos from you guys. I mean, this is not easy. And it's kind of stressful to do this on the fly because I know when I have to do things like this, it can be tough and a little stressful. Can you put I the that looks like a YouTube video? Can you put the the um you click oh, the, the full... settings? Yeah, that little wheel. Uh -huh. Oh, slow mo. And yeah, go yeah, go to go to like twenty five percent. Yeah, you go. love that okay. one. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at Roger. Okay, nice tall tennis body. That's for sure. Yeah, I love the weak wrist. I mean, that's that's a pretty good athletics. We got some good servers send their videos. See, that's another thing too. It seems like. You know, people obsessed with their game. They're willing to video themselves, you know what I mean, and go to work. Yeah. I mean, so that's that's kind of good. Like, again, this is another guy. Let's go in slow motion. I'm watching his serve, and I'm going, you know what? I mean, for serves at recreational tennis, it's, it's above average. Now, mm -hmm. he's kind of got the same thing as Ralph. Notice how his stance is very narrow. So I might bring that back foot out wider. See, so you see how he steps. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, if you could put the camera on me and then when we come back to, I really want to take a look at his whole secret power source position. But again, is this absolutely ruining the serve? No, I've already said this guy, this is another guy who has a really good serve. So it's up to him if he wants to try these little changes to see if it makes a difference. There was one guy who told him the same thing. I'm like, you know what? Your serve's pretty good, you know, but you got a narrow stance. You don't have to change, but why don't you try it? And then he wrote me back. He's like, wow, I added six miles an hour to my serve. And he was super excited. He, he showed me his speed gun. So notice this server too. He's very much like this. He's very much straight leg. Let me see if I can put my camera down a little bit here. Okay. For you guys. Is that a little lower view? It's a little lower view. So Definitely again, lower, yeah. Yeah, so again, you're seeing his legs pretty much in line with each other as he goes into his motion. 
If he just changes it a bit, you see how easy. Again, I'm not a flexible guy. I'm, I'm like one of the least flexible people you ever see. But when you see <laughs> my serve on, on YouTube, you, you always see my chest. Because not because I'm super flexible, just because, you know, I can go like this. He, he's here. He feels comfortable here. I feel comfortable here. And by doing that, I get more rotation, you see? Where when you're here, it's just hard to, it just doesn't, the rotation doesn't seem to come as naturally for people. You always kind of see their chest going forward. That's what we see from him. So I would, again, change it right there. And then the other thing I caught at the end is he was serving, he was serving to the deuce court. And you notice he kept, he kind of ran to the pole. So whenever mm. you serve and you finish, you want to make sure that you, all your body is going towards the target. And, and I'm very uh, specific on this, especially in practice, because what you do in practice, you're going to do in a match. I mean, imagine if you go to serve and you're falling this way, and then you've got your serve out, or you got to go that way. Or you're serving, and you're staying back, and you fall this way. Now you got to come back here. So your landing is very important too. And, and a lot of people don't really pay attention to that or think it's a big deal, but it is a big deal. There, there's a reason why even... Oh. I think we lost Peter. Um, hmm. Don't worry. Peter will be back, I'm sure. Uh, but let's see. All right. Let's see. In the meantime, maybe I'll just try to look at the serve myself. Um, let's see. All right. Oh, Peter's back. Okay. Hey, Peter. Uh, you're that's, back. That's the down part of, of uh, touch screen. So. <laughs> What I was saying is um, there's a reason even at, at recreational tests, it's like professional tests, that most points end within four shots. And a lot of times it's because of people's balance after they serve. So those mm. would be the, the general things I would give this guy. And then also, let's take a look. If you could capture him kind of, Maribon is, if we could go super slow-mo from when he gets to this point onward, because I think he kind of starts to come too much to the inside here too and goes like that. I think he can uh, get this stronger and more dynamic, but that also can happen easier with his stance. So are, is this like kind of where you wanted it? Yeah, you see, like I like what I love about his, look at how his wrist is just dangling. Lots of recreational players don't do that. I love that. I call that a weak wrist. He's building up. He's building up into a nice, power L position, but to me, because of his stance and the way he goes, it seems like it just keeps coming straight up this way and then out that way where players who are just a little more advanced, they keep, they keep building up what he's doing, but it keeps looking more and more like this. You see the difference? He's going to come up and he's going to start to go like this. Mm. And then Andy Roddick and other players have great serves. They're going to come up and they're going to keep coming out like that. You see the difference? He does yeah. this and then this and then this. So it's making the serve a little weaker where the great players just keep coming up and keep going more like that and then out and through. Gotcha. Let's take a look at it and see if I caught that. Or yeah, I'm let's wrong. see. Are we on the screen I here? might be wrong. Nah, Pete the, is rarely wrong. Watch. So I'm loving the weak wrist. You see that? And you see how it kind of slumps? It like slumps yeah. down too low. His elbow kind of goes too low into his rib cage. So like he kind of loses it for me. And look at his racket, how it's kind of like straight up and down there. So yeah. he loses it for me right there. If I'm going, let's max out this guy's serve. Because I mean, his serve could be even bigger because he looks like a nice, tall, lanky guy who he has all the mechanics perfect could probably add another 10 miles an hour in there. But again, I'm being nitpicky because this is one of the better serves I'm seeing out of a recreational court. I mean, most serves I see at a recreational court, you know, I understand why so many people are playing pickleball. <laughs> All right. Here we oh go. my gosh. Cool. Oh, do you want to see it again or you no, want to see another one? I think I've made my point. Okay. There's somebody Perfect. else to go to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Are people commenting um, or, or do people have any questions or not really? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm showing my thing. Um, let's see real quick. Uh, Jaime. So um, we have. Uh, you're on fire. Gordon is is lost. Thank you. Is loss of secret power source still the biggest power leak? 
I would say so. Yeah. I would say that's the biggest thing. Basically, you know, of course your legs are important. I've heard some coaches and some recreational players debate, you know, what's more important? Is it the leg drive that gets the power? Is it the arm action? And to me, it's not even close. It's the arm action because yes, if you have proper leg drive and all that, that's going to make your serve bigger and better. But if, if you have no throwing mechanics, no proper serving mechanics in the arm, it doesn't matter what the legs are doing. You know, then you lose everything from this point on can mess everything up. You can be doing everything beautiful. You can start to look at a professional player and all of a sudden if you just start to mess up this part. It doesn't matter what you've done before, you see. But if you want everything that you've done to help you and get bigger and bigger and connect the kinetic chain all the way up from the ground up, and then you have this explosion in the racket, then this performance is the most important performance to get right. You, you've got to make sure that you come here and you know you do the birthday hat like Ryan says, and that you're coming up on edge and you have that all in perfect synchronicity. If you don't, and everything else is great, it, it doesn't really matter. You're going to have just a, a, an average serve. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Great points. Um, awesome. So let's see. Let's go to a different serve then. Um, this one is a very nice serve. Um, oh, no, sorry. I'll go back to more questions later. But uh, let's see what you can find with this one, Peter. Uh, should I do slow mo, or maybe we'll do regular speed just to well, see? Well, let's do regular speed. This is this the, is this the is this the college player? Yes, yes, okay. it is. Okay, we got the college player. Play it in regular seat speed so we can see how big it is. Then we'll break it down in slow mo. Okay. First of all, you can already see the stance is different. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Okay, now let's break into slow motion. Sure. So this kid has a great serve, but it could be it could actually be bigger because it's kind of a theme of this uh, live stream is everybody's kind of got good mechanics that we've looked at so far. But again, if we stop right there, you see the elbows too synced in too low. Mm. The racket to me is already going back too far like this instead of in here. I think, and, and we don't, we don't ever really see his chest. I, I and, and if you look at his stance, mm. it's kind of interesting. If you look at his stance, he has a, a wider stance to where I, ex I would have expected to get a little more rotation, but he just kind of kept himself forward. He didn't really rotate his hips at all. And again, this does, this is not going to be hard for him to do because I'm sure he's a better athlete at this point in his life. Cause he's in the prime of his life. And I, I've turned, turned into a broken down car. So, I mean, I'm sure <laughs> he can definitely just do this to get a little more and get that elbow pop a little more. If you look at it, it all looks good. But to me, his elbow is too close into his body. His wrist mm -hmm. is back here too soon. But he's got great mechanics coming from out of there. Once he drops behind his head and going up to it, <laughs> A+. plus. But I think, I think that one key part that we're looking at, so you now we can go slow motion from there. See, like, oh, And I also right. love how he's got the weak wrist to, off to the side. You see that? See, that's nice. So this is all good. Mm. And then to me, this is oh, his flip. only weak part right here. Oops. And you see how he's kind of over-rotated. You see how his body's kind of over-rotated going off to the, to the uh, left side. And so I think his body's just a little bit out of alignment, you know, for somebody at his level. But then when he goes to serve, I mean, the athleticism into the serve is great. But I, I think his, his balance, you know, to look at how he kind of falls – I bet he doesn't really fall consistent most times either. I bet he's a little erratic with his landings and that could affect his first shot, you know? So I'm, yeah, I'm, have... th so he can, there's definitely room for improvement, although this is certainly a more advanced serve. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we have, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say we have other clip second serves. I don't know if you want to look at it, but yeah. Um, yeah, like the balance, you're right. He kind of lands different. I think this one. Yeah. Yeah. I think that last thing looked good, but, I, I just think these are little things that can make a great player be even better. 
because again, he's a great player. You know, this has nothing to do with just because I'm coaching somebody doesn't mean I'm like, oh, I'm better than that. I mean, this kid looks like he's probably playing college tennis. You know, yeah. I probably, you know, who knows how much if I could even get a game off the kid. I don't, but I'm I'm here to help him, not not you know, say I'm a better server or a better player. But that that's what I'm seeing. So hopefully he can kind of take it to heart and um and he can change a little bit of the things that we talked about. And I bet you he'll get a little more power and and even more important than that. Uh, better balance recovery for the first shot. Yeah, and Peter, so definitely with the rotation, I think that's pretty uh, fairly easy on the spectrum of things. And then in terms of like the wrist stuff, like what do you recommend? Like the birthday hat or, you know, well, for the... he's kind of got all that fine. That the, everything he's doing with his arm is fine. He doesn't really need to work on the birthday hat or anything like that. Okay. It's just to me, he starts to over rotate this way too soon and throw, throws the balance off a little bit. Okay. Like he's kind of, you see, he's like up there. He's like this. Like if you watch Fetter, he's actually like in a perfect straight line. Uh, you know, that's like the mm. perfect thing. Like if you, when you watch him hit, you know, that, that kid, he brought his back foot out across this way. And then he's kind of like in this position, he's getting ready to go up and hit, you know, and then as he's hitting, his head is kind of like going out that way, mm. right? Where you watch Fetter, all of this is in one perfect line as he's going up the hit. This is all like in sync and the head's like looking perfectly at the ball. So he's got like that beautiful balance. So, I mean, that would be the kind of like the prototype that we'd all go for to where right. I think he could have a little more rotation back in the beginning so we could see his chest. I like to see his legs step up to the inside of his sneaker rather than the outside of his sneaker. And I'd like to see his body more in alignment as he's hitting the serve. And that would make a serve more consistent. Mm. Uh, maybe add just a tad more power. And, you, you know, like, look at that. His landing and his balance is off on that one for an elite player. You know, because, again, he hits a fast serve. If someone connects with it, one of two things are going to happen on most of those serves. Either he's going to get a powder puff return because the serve was fast and they couldn't get it, or they're going to time it perfectly and the ball is going to come like a rocket at his feet. So he's got to be absolutely perfect and balanced for that next ball. It's just not about, well, let's take a look at my serve. Well, what's going to happen after the serve? That's important part of the serve too. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. Thanks, Peter. So this was uh, great stuff. Thank you. Um, I think that was Jaime actually. And then now let's go to Michael's serve. Maybe the back is what you probably want. So back view. Back view. Give me the back view. See is this Michael Rogers? I believe so. I see I know my peeps. You do. Yeah. Michael Rogers has been out to oh. Atlanta. He's a great guy. Awesome. So let's awesome. let's take a look at this. Same thing, you get more rotation back. I like mm -hmm. how he's keeping things simple, you know. Um, he's somebody athletic enough to jump, but I think he's just working on his balance. Yeah. If we could go in slow motion now. Okay. Let me put that on. Overall, a nice, a nice solid throwing motion. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy's improved a lot over the years. And I like how, I think in the beginning, when he used to serve to serve, then he would kind of almost do too much physically, and he'd, throw his balance off, but we can see right mm. there, pretty good balance on his serve. You know, I, I know this is, this is also, I love what he's, you know, he sent in a warm up serve. Um, Michael can serve much bigger than this. So I like that he sent in a warm up serve. So just so you guys know, just so you know, we're looking at a warm up serve from Michael. Michael can get more physical with his serves. I've seen him do it and he can hit the serve bigger than this. Um, I, I like overall what I'm seeing. I mean, yeah. you know, his serves improved a lot. The balance is really good. Look how mm. when he's done, he's kind of falling into the court the correct way. Um, I love these warm-up serves. Yeah, and I he said really he... don't mm -hmm. see too much that I would change on that last serve. Let me see that last serve again. We go back. The, the last serve? Okay. And he yeah. said he changed to, to uh, platform from pinpoint. Yeah. I mean, I, oh. I, like, I like that last serve I saw. You, you see how the leg drive, he could maybe hold his racket a little longer than the secret power source, but it's within the window for me of his leg, of his racket drop, yeah. and leg drive. I'd say they're pretty synced. 
he might go in a tad too early, but we're being nitpicky. Because you can yeah. see right now, he's starting to think. He's starting to think about raising his legs up and his racket's starting to go back there. He might be in there a tad too early, but we're talking. We're 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 getting so nitpicky now. But we can see that you know he gets his elbow to kind of go back. He's got that nice secret power source. He's got great balance, which is why I really don't want to go and get put this guy through any more like mental stress because. I remember when I was working with him, it was a lot of the balance and the rhythm and being more grounded. And he's doing all of that. So, you know, I, I kind of like, just keep working with what you got going here, Michael. This is, this has gotten way, way better, way better. Like, look at the, you know, you can just see the deliverance in his, you know, when he's done, his body is always just falling right through to the target. So I, I, I say, you know, nothing really to work on other than maybe holding into the secret power source longer before you go to the racket drop. But I wouldn't even obsess over that too much. Overall, I love the rhythm of the serve. Nice. Sweet. Um, cool. Anything else or should we move on to the next I, one? No, I like the rhythm. I, I really, and, it, and it's got a nice relaxed fall through. Yeah. It's nice. Looks good. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what else we got here. Did we do Roger already? Um, yeah, we did, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did Roger. Sorry. Um uh Tom, we did. Yeah. Yeah, who we've if we've gone through it. How many have yeah, we done, sorry. Peter? We did everybody? I don't think well, we have we definitely have at least one more. I I'll, I'll I'll double check myself, but let me, I have a different screen for this one. Sorry. So let me get that on here and um, remove this thingy. Stop this. Share screen. Almost there. And yeah. And this is another Michael, actually. So let me just play it for you. This is the back view that I have. I have other views. Okay. <laughs> Oh, it disappeared. Sorry. Um, yeah. Oh, geez. What the? There we go. Let me turn this sound off. Any uh, any th thoughts from? I don't know exactly now if I can slow this down. Have you oh, used okay. um VLC? I don't know. Uh, again, what I love about it is you know you see how he's got. A nice, loose, relaxed wrist on the way back. Don't sleep on that, people. Here's one thing I want to point out. Notice most people are reviewing yeah, yeah. today. We have not seen a serving nightmare. And so I want to give everybody who sent in a serve credit because what I'm seeing is people who are not afraid to film themselves, not afraid to take action, are working on their serves. And why this for recreational tennis, almost every serve we've seen today has looked pretty nice. Like, look, again, I love how his racket and his wrists are just like relaxed there. Yeah. As he's I love going. That. So, I mean, overall, this is a really nice motion again. And um, I think, but if you look at it, see, I, I like, I like, and this guy certainly looks strong enough and, yeah. and athletic enough. It, it, I don't think it's going to, I don't think range of motions is an issue. And to me, even though we're not able to really slow it down, it looks like he, he by choice, limits his range of motion, not by a physical limitation. Does that make sense? So yeah. he comes here, and then he starts to kind of go out here. You see that? He, I think he could continue. Like, he, this looks awesome. And he just kind of stops it and starts to go out this way and hits a serve. I think he could get to here and continue back. It's kind of been a theme that's been missing on most of our servers today is, is overall, compared to most recreational players, they get high marks, especially because I'm seeing this over and over again. I love this, and I usually don't see this. So I'm seeing this nice weak wrist, but it kind of stops here, and then it stays even with his rib cage, and then it starts to come out to his hitting side too early. I would like to see him get here, and then continue to come back there and get that full range that's again the one thing i'm seeing missing on a serve gotcha gotcha awesome awesome great stuff uh 
Let me try to read some uh, comments here. Uh, here we go. Or questions. So what foot movements do you like slash dislike, Pete? Okay. So I will tell you one I dislike. And then I will tell you, uh, to me, a lot of his style and, and it's whatever you like best. So if you could put the camera, I guess, on me again. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of standing up and sitting down. I feel like I'm at church or something. <laughs> All right. So I'll try and put the camera even lower still. We're going to make the camera do like a limbo today. <laughs> I know. Dun, 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 dun. Look, look, there's B2. He's hey, in the house. what's up, bud? He's in the house. Okay, so the one foot move I don't like, and not to say that there's never been a, a good server who doesn't. Like, I think Greg Rudzeski would do this on the ad side uh, when he served his out wide serve. But overall, I'm not a fan of bringing the back foot to the outside. Because then again, you, it, it makes you over rotate too early in general. Okay, so you have to be a really good athlete to get away with this. Uh, otherwise, a lot of people who are, you know, still developing their serve, they start to over-rotate too quick. So uh, that's my biggest pet peeve is coming out here. Now, as far as if you, wanna, if you just want to be in that platform stance and keep your feet like this and go into the serve, I don't mind that. And I don't mind the slide up as long as you come – to the inside of your sneaker. See that? I'm coming right up to the inside there. I like that. So I just don't like this. This is the biggest thing. And in general, you know, if you want to have your feet close together, kind of like Andy Roddick, you know, Roddick would kind of be here and his feet pretty close. That's fine, but I do prefer a little bit of a wider base. I mean, overall. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. Nice view we got there. <laughs> Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, what, what gives a, a live arm or how okay. do you get one? How do you get one? Or what does that mean? Yeah. Just... You go, you go to, uh, Tom Brady.com and you, he's, he's now he's retired. <laughs> he's selling, he's selling bits and pieces of his, of his arm. Did you know that? <laughs> no. Okay. You trickster. Uh, <laughs> no, what? What makes a live arm is number one, I think that nice, weak, relaxed wrist. Okay. That's big. And proper throwing mechanics. You know, having that, we've been talking about it all live stream, having that power L position. Lots of people, when they throw, like when you've heard the term, and again, I didn't make the term up, I'm not saying the term's right or wrong. But if you're a little more old school, you used to hear you throw like a girl. Now you wouldn't say that you know anymore. Like, oh, you throw like a girl. Because especially uh, females are getting into many more sports at a younger age. And they, they can throw darn good ball when they get involved in sports. So that really, that term just came from, you know, you have poor throwing mechanics. And, and, and since back in the day when not as many females are playing sports, they tended to, to have their – they tend to have a weak L and kind of like would push the throw to people, you see, where people grew up and learned how to throw a ball, especially a football, you know, they're my, like my brother taught me how to throw, you know, and you watch sports, you just tend to naturally load up like this. If you load up like this with a nice weak wrist, this is where that live arm comes from because now I'm nice and relaxed. I've got full rotation without even trying too hard. And I'm just waiting here, super relaxed. I'm waiting to strike. I like to think of it like a cobra striking. It's like very fast twitch, you know? So mm. that's what makes that live arm. You know, you really want to feel like you're, you got a nice quick snap and that it's like when, you, when you're doing the thermometer, the old school thermometer, getting that like whipping, that's what makes the live arm. Love it. Thank you, Peter. Great, great points. Uh, Linda should be a good one. Great summit so far. Thank you, Maribon. Appreciate it, Linda. Always so nice and supportive. Um, we do appreciate it. Um, and we have some really nice yeah, messages for John as well. Um, uh, and then 
Gordon, fantastic points. That's the timing. Thank you, Peter. Uh, let's see. Let's try to get some questions. Oh, yeah. Jay, look, I know the forehand and backhand technique changes over time. Does the serve change through the decades? It could be stance preference, new serve type, or anything. Well, I think everything just gets more scientific. You know, like if you looked at Pancho Gonzalez hit a serve, and it's still the same kind of mechanics, you know, like not much has changed, but today you're not seeing many people do too many things wrong on the key non-negotiables that we talked about to where back in the day, since it wasn't a scientific and, and, you know, the Academy lifestyle, like one of our greatest players of all time, Chris ever, she basically started right back. She, she, she missed, she didn't, and that, and that's why her serve wasn't so big. You know, it was okay. It got the point in, but her first move, she basically would move with the toss and she'd get right back here, you know, so she'd get here and kind of pause. And then she kind of slice her way through her serve again, a functional serve. But if you look at how big she could hit it, she was very limited because of that first move. Her, her tossing arm and her hitting arm acted together, and she never really had any of that build up hold into it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Gordon, the ladies' Wimbledon champ, Rybakina, has changed her serve to get much more rotation. Most impressive. Come back, Pete. Nice. Uh, Jason is very impressed by the server said, pick more three out of three, five players next year. These players are already four Oh four, five level laughing emoji, prayer emoji. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I just, you know, I left it as like, you know, first five get in sort of thing, but yeah, some really nice serves. So uh, that, that's today. a test. I mean, but to me that speaks a lot because, um, there are lots of online instructors who would love to, uh, get into more video analysis and there's very few people who can do it to make a living off of it that way because the demand is just not there you know I, in in my I, I add in my serving challenges and in my backhand challenges because I really want to help people I add that as a bonus that you can send in your videos Unfortunately, I just made that that that's the that's the course, you know, everybody who sends in a video, I'm going to charge you a certain amount of money. Um, it probably wouldn't do that great because there's just not enough people taking action consistently, willing to go out and film themselves, especially the ones who really need help, because I think they're just intimidated by the camera. They don't want to see the truth necessarily. And, um, you know, so. But notice the first five in that we looked at today, it's like, okay, we're having to be pretty nitpicky because their serves are pretty nice. Yeah. There's a reason for that. They're working on their serve. They're probably yeah. filming themselves a lot. They probably watched a ton of serve instruction videos. So they have been trying to get those check marks right. And they're, they're pretty close in most of the areas. Yeah, yeah, doing a great job. I'm sure they're watching a lot of crunch time coaching. That's why oh, the serves are so good. Absolutely. Boom. Boom. Um, Alex, <laughs> what about wrist action? Any thoughts on the wrist? Do we want to think about that that much? Or what do you think? Well, yeah, I think so. You know, because um, number one, the key is, is to be relaxed the whole time. We, that's something I've talked about this entire presentation today is getting this. And I, I, I said, don't take this for granted. I keep pointing out because I keep being impressed by how many people are, are here because this really helps you get that snap. You know, there's lots of people who hold the racket tight. And so when they make their first move, they look like this. And that, that also kind of promotes you flipping back early to where if you're loose and like that, that also gets you into that power L position. And then from there, like I have Ryan Reedy from Two Minute Tennis is kind of cool. He helped one of my classes last week because we had a rain out. And he kept telling people, you know, from there, you know, really practice kind of like you're doing a lasso practice you know and, and he had them practice like they were getting the rope ready and then, and then eventually you throw up so that's that's kind of the wrist action you want to think about imagine you're you have this lasso and you're getting it going and you're nice and loose like that and then 
one time when you come back, make because that's another thing. People kind of get that or uncoordinated, and then you come out here and then you do it, then you don't have anything. But as as you get that lasso going, before you throw it forward, you got to come back again if you want to get the most out of it. You got to come back here furthest and then throw the lasso far. You see that? But if you're just here, then you go to throw it. You can't really throw the rope that far. So you, if you want to throw the rope the furthest, you come, you get this thing going, and then and then your last move, you come back even further, and then you throw it. You can kind of see my wrist getting in there too. Did you guys see that? Mm-hmm. I did. I did. And yeah, it's definitely okay. powerful. Like, you know, because I had a tendency to like open up like flip up my racket and, and you know the more that i when i keep it keep my wrists like this like where the the racket face is facing the ground like that yeah. really helps so much with you know the lasso yeah. and, and yeah. you know yeah the birthday hat stuff um so awesome grab gabrielle i know we have a few more minutes so um as a right-handed serving in the deuce side what's your opinion on the stand of the left foot closed or, or stance, maybe of the left foot closed or a bit open close, uh, closed helps with foot fall, but open Football. is required. Okay. So let me, uh, if you could put the camera kind of back on me again. Sure. You're the star. <laughs> let me take out Gabrielle's comment. Okay. Anything else? Just kidding. <laughs> you could serve me a lemon water. All right, email it to you. Okay. So she talked about, so I'll stand uh, this way. This way. I'll move back a little further. There so there's go. the deuce court over there. Okay. So she's asking the deuce court the foot. Now, again, the easiest. So forget about everything I said with the elbow and all that stuff. The easiest thing to do to get the, if you're having trouble getting the ball just delivered into the deuce box it's going to be easiest to stand this way, right? Because then, because then you're going to be able to come here and, and deliver it easy that way. Let's just assume she is a three zero three five player. She might still have the frying pan grip, maybe. You know, so if she has any of that, the easiest delivery is going to kind of be like to go like that. You know, as you go this way, you can get more rotation, but it might be very hard for you coordination wise to figure out a way to get the the body and everything back in the court. So if you're struggling, if you're, if you're trying and you're watching instructional videos and you're really struggling so hard to stand like this, then it's okay to keep bringing this foot around this way until you feel comfortable. I don't have any problem with that. Awesome. Thank you, good sir. Um, let's see what else we got. Can uh, Jason, can Pete... Talk about opening the racket face too early despite having knocked off the birthday hat. Thanks. Well, one oh. thing I like to do, I love the birthday hat analogy, but I also like people because you're right. At any point in that motion for, for people just learning how to do this, you can still open up even after you knock the birthday hat off, you know, like, you have to keep the racket on edge so long and it's just so hard to do naturally until all of a sudden it becomes natural, but it doesn't come natural for most people. So what I like to tell people to do, and if you watch my video, just so you can start to develop this is I like to reverse engineer everything. I, I probably should now lift the camera up a little bit. So now okay. we want to focus more on the upper body. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, you know, let's say you're knocking off the birthday hat, but once you knock off the birthday hat and you come this way, you start to do that. You start to do the frying pan move. That's why I like people to, to do the fall off the mountain exercise and do a lot of shadow strokes to where I'm like, just put your racket connected to your head and then do some shadow strokes too to where you focus on your thumbnail. So pretend that you're, your racket is on the side of the mountain. And then when your legs kind of go down, it, it has the, the racket fall off the mountain. But you want to make sure that the racket and the thumbnail stay the inside. If you fall off the mountain and you, you open your thumbnail and it flips up to the sky, you're doing it wrong. So you want to make sure that when you fall off the mountain, you can see your thumbnail. And then as you're practicing your swing and you start rotating your hips, and the racket's coming up by your ear, you should still be able to see your thumbnail. And you basically see your thumbnail until that last possible second 
and then you push your thumbnail away and all of a sudden you can't see your thumbnail anymore. So doing lots of shadow strokes like that, I recommend. Got it. Thanks, Pete. And, and sorry, like the timing again of the drop with the legs is what now? Like what should we be pushing up or push or pushing yeah, down? Yeah, so, so basically, let's say you're doing the whole thing, the whole serve. You want to be right here holding it into the secret power source. And then when you start to think about driving your legs up, that's when you're going to drop behind the head and explode, right? Perfect, so, yeah. If I'm moving, so the serve motion is I can move back, right? Now I push forward. And as I'm pushing forward, I'm bending and getting a secret power source. And then as I'm thinking about driving up, then I flip back and go. Perfect. Man, that Perfect. felt like that was going to be a big serve. I don't know how it, how it looked to you guys, but I felt like I was about to pop it. I think you would have definitely popped it, man. That's a break things in the kitchen here. <laughs> no, nah, we don't want that. I only a couple minutes left. So what made Sampras's second serve so powerful and accurate? He probably hit like 10 billion of them. True. I mean, it, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it, it, it just became about confidence, nerve and technique. His, his technique was perfect. He, um, he played all the time. And then he started to get so confident, like, you know what? Everybody's serving this fast. I think I can serve this fast. And so he started to practice like that. And they go in. And when you have the correct technique and you're able to put spin on the ball, you see spin is rewarded by racket head speed. So the better your timing can be with and increase the racket head speed, the serve actually becomes safer to some degree. Your toss spin forehand becomes safer to some degree. The faster you swing and you have the correct spin on the ball, you're going to be rewarded for the racket at speed, not punished, where a lot of recreational players get punished for the racket at speed because they're not impacting the ball at the right angle when they swing fast. If it's a little off, you're going to, you're going to miss by a lot. But if you have the correct angle coming at the ball, it, you know, the faster you swing, the better. Right. That's right. And let's try to sneak this. Um, you have not mentioned, maybe you have, <laughs> but uh, when do, when do you begin accelerating the arm? Okay. So that's a great, I like to think about my serve acceleration as a whip and the earlier, the better, especially for people who have a decent amount of pace on their serve, but they keep serving the ball long, which is a lot of recreational players. You're accelerating too late right so if you're somebody who like you notice your serve you know has a decent amount of pace but you keep hitting it like that far past the service box think of it like a whip so if if, if i have a whip in my hand and i want to crack the counter here the closer i am to it i'm not going to get a big crack on it the further i move back and i start to crack the whip by the time it hits the counter title will make that sound, right? So what I think about for me, because your mind and your body, they're never going to be perfectly in sync. The body is going to, you're going to tell your body to do something and it's going to be a delayed response. So remember that. So basically for me, when I get to here and my legs start to go up, even though my racket might not be the absolute fastest that's going to go, at this point, I basically tell myself, it's kind of like pulling a trigger on a gun, like go. Like once I come out of here, I'm thinking about going as fast as I possibly can into the ball. You see, once I leave here, bam. It's not like I leave here and then still work it and still work it and, and now accelerate. For me, that's too late. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Any comments about the shoulder on shoulder cartwheel action? Or? I hate the shoulder on shoulder cartwheel tip. How about Got that? It. Why do I hate that? The shoulder over shoulder. Because, and, and not to disrespect any tennis coach, because it, it has its function, but especially most people who are doing uh, Tennis Summit, Tennis Con, come to visit me, they're between 3-0 and 4-0. And you hear the shoulder over shoulder. And if you're focused on shoulder over shoulder, you're going to go down too fast. Hmm. To me, I'm like, gravity is going to win every time. What goes up must come down. So 
I try and defy gravity, right? I try and get as deep a tilt as I can. And even though on video, I've watched my serve plenty of time, when I'm hitting my serve, I'm usually tucked in here, you know, and I'm fully extended there. But mentally, I'm trying to still be here hitting the serve. And it was kind of interesting too, like again, Ryan Reedy from Two Minute Tennis, he worked with one of my students and my student was dropping too early. It's something I had talked to him a lot about actually before. And Ryan had him do a great exercise to where he had him go up and keep the toss arm up and hit his wrist, right? So I, I got to sink lower. I'll sink low in my kitchen, right? So Ryan <laughs> had him doing this, basically going up and, and, and hitting his wrist to keep this arm up because it was going down. So if you're like, I've seen like student, especially you guys are so obsessed with stuff. He takes up so literally that I've seen people, you know, really work on here I am and then shoulder over shoulder. And then you're collapsing too early into the court. Yeah. yeah. So I think you got to be careful with that shoulder over shoulder. Now, if you're with a student and you see a certain thing, I mean, obviously shoulder over shoulder is a tip for a reason. It worked for a lot of students and it's, and it's, and it's a good tip and it's a good visual. And I'm sure there are certain students out there who needed to hear the shoulder over shoulder, right? This is, so I'm not saying it's a bad tip, and I'm sure for certain students, it was a game changer. But I think for a lot of students, it kind of works the opposite way. You're focused on yeah. doing the shoulder over shoulder, and you keep crashing yourself into the court. Yeah. So that's why I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of it uh, for a lot of players. Yeah, I'd be careful with that tip. Well, Peter, thank you so much for this live session. I know you do have to run, and I'm just putting in um, Peter's – all access pass link. If you found value from this session, I know I did. Uh, and you want to watch this one, you know, anytime you want way past the summit date months or years from now um, and, and support Peter while doing so then pick up a copy of the all access pass. Um, it's definitely great value. So um, there you go. Definitely check it out. Peter, thank you so much for jumping in again for, for John and uh, really appreciate it. And we will be seeing you again uh, live for the summit. So I can't wait for that. I believe Sunday at 8 p.m. So Sunday night. Uh, Eastern. Yeah, that'll be fun. So thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for attending. So appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks.